Hallelujah. Grab your swords. Sharpen them. Grab your Holy Ghost bazookas. And let's load them up. Because <laughs> we got some demon chasing. You know, that's a hobby. If you're a spirit-filled believer, demon chasing should be a hobby. What kind of sport are you in? I'm a demon hunter. We skin demons. Although they've been skinned already, that's why they're a demon. <laughs> Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians 15. In verse 33. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33. Is everybody there? Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome to Training for Raining, Tuesday Night Live. It's worth the drive. <laughs> Woohoo! Come on, don't you feel better now? Amen. <coughs> if you don't feel better, it means you didn't connect. Amen. Come on, we just went to the throne room and did shots. <laughs> glory. Amen. Shots of glory. My wife said to me the other day, we were coming home from service, she said, I saw glory bombs hit the service. She was up here laughing, like, hysterically. That was Sunday, I think. Yeah. She said she saw glory bombs hit, and boom, boom. Snap, one hit her. It's called glorified. You get hit by a glory bomb. Verse 33, let's speak it. Do not be what? Okay, that's good. Do not be what? Deceived. Deceived. Satan's greatest weapon is deception and his power is fear. So what he tries to do is he tries to prevent you from submitting to the things God is requiring us to do. See, there are righteous requirements for us to fall in line. This is not a religious act. This is a military operation. There's a war going on. We were born in a war. Amen? We were born in this spiritual war, and in this war, if you're not one who fights, you become a casualty. Amen. If you say the devil ain't bothering you, it's because you ain't bothering him. Amen. Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Evil company, that means evil presence influences good habits. The word presence is associated with atmosphere. Everyone say atmosphere. So you carry an atmosphere. And one of the things God is requiring now is a pure atmosphere. Your atmosphere, which is his presence. Does everybody get it? His presence, your atmosphere. In this, he's requiring a pure atmosphere. Why? Because it keeps you and it will touch others. He says this, next verse, 34. Awake to righteousness and do not sin. Why? Because sin is the presence of evil. For some do not have the knowledge of God. This I speak to their shame. Again, evil presence influences good habits. We are to wake to righteousness, justice, and the truth. His presence is your atmosphere. Without his presence, you don't carry an atmosphere. You still carry your old atmosphere. That's why worship is essential. That's why we sing the words, you must have endurance to press through. There's three chambers, the outer court, holy place, and most holy place. So many people still hanging out in the outer court, and there's no change there. They're still living in the life of salvation, salvation, salvation. 
not living in a life of glory. There's a difference. They carry no power. No power. They can't even endure. As soon as they get ready to get into the second chamber, they quit. Don't even know it. The enemy's got them deceived and convinced. Can you imagine standing in the presence of God? And Jesus is standing. Now, the word says that when two are together, two or three are together, together, he's in the midst, right? Can you imagine leaving while worship is going on? How stupid can we be and still breathe? That means there's really no connection, no relationship. Because there's no respect to that presence. See, when you learn how to respect his presence, his presence is with you more. If you don't know how to respect his presence, it ain't there. Then you're nothing but religious. I don't care if you're a tongue speaking or not. You can speak in tongues all day long and still not have his presence. His presence is required by cooperation. It's required by denying yourself. It's required by pressing in. It's required by an exchange of your presence for his so you get a new atmosphere. That's where the reverence comes in. The fear, the respect, the honor of who he is. Because if it's not there, then neither is his presence. Is everybody okay? Acts 3. Oh, hallelujah. Acts chapter 3. In verse 18, pure atmosphere. So whose responsibility is to maintain a pure atmosphere? Ours. Ours. But if you can't get into his presence, how can you have a pure atmosphere? You can't. In verse 18, let's speak it. Hallelujah. Acts 3, 18. But those things which God foretold by the mouth of all of his prophets that Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and be converted. In other words, Change. Change your way. Change your attitude. Change the way you are. Why? Repent for those things. Repent for wrong motives. Repent for wrong attitude. Repent for the things we've said. Repent for the grudges. Repent for unforgiveness. Repent for anything that will prevent you from accessing into his presence. Why? Because the blood always goes before the spirit. Repent. That your sins may be blotted out. Sins here, remember, sin is the presence of evil. So that times of what? Refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. <laughs> and that he may send Jesus Christ who was preached to you before. Whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all of his holy prophets since the world began. Again, repent, reject, and turn away from the attitude, motives, and desires, words, thoughts that defile a pure atmosphere. You know, rebellion contaminates. So we're to be activating the blood by repenting. It's the blood of Christ cleansing, restoring the atmosphere. See, his presence come, your atmosphere changes. If its presence isn't there, your atmosphere ain't changed. Psalm 24. Oh, hallelujah. Psalm 24. In 
in verse 3? What does it say? Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? What is the hill of the Lord? It's his presence. Or who may stand in his holy place? It's his presence. He who has what? Clean hands. That means you haven't touched anything unclean. And a what? Pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul to a what? Idol. Who's the worst idol? We are. Amen. We are. That's why he said deny yourself. Nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who what? Seek him. Seek him. Press through all chambers to get to him. You who seek your face. Oh, wow. Clean hands and a pure heart create a pure atmosphere. These are seekers of righteousness. It's not about right and wrong. It's about righteousness. It's not about who's right or wrong. It's about the fruits of righteousness. You're responsible for you, no one else. Amen? 1 Corinthians 6. First Corinthians six. Oh, hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter six and verse twelve. First Corinthians six twelve. If everybody there, let's speak it. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. How does somebody get brought up under the power of any? The atmosphere. See, there's another atmosphere. That's why it says, "Bad company corrupts, or evil company corrupts what? Good habits." Remember, sin is the presence of evil. That means they're always trying to approach us. They're always trying to exchange. The Bible tells us that demons come back with seven more. That's amazing how many believers don't believe they, uh, that a Christian and have a demon. They're the ones that have them. It's called a lying spirit. Well, how can a demon dwell with the Holy Spirit? Well, who created everything? And there's demons everywhere. Hello? They don't get it. Didn't Jesus go in and clean out the temple? Amen. The demons come back in the temple? Amen. So whose responsibility to keep the temple clean? Hello? Why do you think we go through trials? Your trials and tribulations expose your enemy. What you're struggling with today? Everything. Well, then you got an everything demon. <laughs> it's called legion. <laughs> Remember, you'll know them by their fruit. Amen? Things that are lawful but not helpful brought under the power of another presence to contaminate your atmosphere. Galatians 5. You know, the, you're probably hearing this voice saying, oh, he's speaking directly to me. You're right. That's the right voice. The voice that says, oh, I must be speaking about my neighbor is wrong. <laughs> Hallelujah. Galatians 5, verse 13. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. For you, brethren, have been called to freedom or liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. 
but through love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Huh? But if you bite and you devour one another, beware lest you be what? Consumed by another presence. Amen? I say then walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. This is a misuse of liberty. Given away to an evil influences and contaminate atmosphere. And you know when you get around someone and it stinks. I don't mean physical as smell. Even though sometimes you can smell a demon. You can smell that spirit of nicotine all the time. Alcohol and stuff like that. But you can sense a presence from someone that is just wicked. You can just look at their eyes sometimes. You can see. You can sense it. it. Listen, as long as your atmosphere is pure, you will sense others. But it will be a distance from you. And you're not going out to check everyone else's atmosphere. Amen? I mean, we're to be fruit checkers. Amen? We're fruit inspectors. That's so we don't associate with something that's bearing rotten fruit, you know. And we don't want to be around granolas that are nutty and fruity. Amen. Why? Because their atmosphere will affect you. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, so he hides in an atmosphere or in a presence to try to get to you. That's why accursed items carry a different atmosphere. They carry a presence that creates an enticing, desiring atmosphere. That's why it's important that we clean out things in our home. That's why we get rid of things that cause, because of a cursed item, draws demonic activity. And it's amazing how many times, man, I've gone in people's homes to pray for people, and they got stuff all over the house. Dragons, skull and crossbones. And these are supposed to be Christians. A skull and crossbone promotes death. It draws demonic activity. And people don't get this. Psalm 11. Hallelujah. Psalm 11, starting in verse 1. In the Lord I what? Put my trust. How can you say to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? For look, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow on the string that they may shoot secretly at the upright and heart. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? So listen, you're being shot at every day. The powers of darkness have assigned witches, warlocks, demons on you to prevent you from advancing, to try and set traps in your life, to cause snares so that you do not fulfill your call, purpose, and destiny. That's why we have the shield of faith that quenches every fiery dart. The word of God. Amen. The wicked shoot at the upright in heart to entice a reaction of the old man. Because when the old man reacts, you contaminate your the pure presence, the pure atmosphere. So he's always trying to get us to contaminate it. I'm telling you right now, we're going to be hearing so much repeated stuff. Because Jesus is coming back for what? Blemish-free bride. Blemish-free. He is requiring a purity of heart and mind, clean hands. He's coming back for those who carry a pure atmosphere. 
because his atmosphere is pure, then those atmospheres join together. There's going to be a lot of people really disappointed when he comes and removes his body. And many will be left behind. Many. Psalm 31. How many of y'all know we're in the last days? Man, turn on the news. That'll tell you right there. Don't watch it too long, though most of it's lies. Psalm 31. And verse 1. Let's speak it. And you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in your righteousness. Bow down your ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be my rock of refuge and a fortress of defense to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Pull me out of the net which they what, have secretly laid for me. For you are my strength. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. You know, here we are, confession. That's what this man was doing. He was confessing. Lord, you're my everything. I know they've secretly laid traps for me. Confession is the rope of rescue. Does everybody get it? If you fall in the pit, the rope comes down to pull you out. The more you confess, the more that rope falls. You know, it's like a machine. You get pulled right out. Confession is the rope of rescue. The more words of hope, the faster and faster the rope pulls you out. That's where you're decreeing his word. You're decreeing his word. Lord, you're my hope. You're my strength. You're my fulfillment. You're my life. You're my provider. Ephesians 2. See, because sometimes you can begin to sense the creeping of that presence to try and contaminate your atmosphere. You start hearing things of bitterness. You start hearing things of offense. You start hearing these. They're a distance off, but they're trying to get closer and closer. If you start to tune into them, well, you just welcome them. If you say, yeah, yeah, you're right. I am offended. Well, you just sat down to lunch with one. Then things get worse. Ephesians 2. What are they trying to do? Contaminate you. Ephesians 2, starting at verse 1. We'll speak it together, please. And you, he what? He made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Now, wait a minute. The prince of the power of the air, is that an atmosphere? Hmm. There's an atmosphere that rules this earth. It's called evil. Does everybody get it? It's an evil atmosphere. The word says that, that get dressed with the full armor of, the, of God because the days are evil because there's an evil atmosphere that rules this earth it's called the prince of power of air it says it is the spirit who now works in the sons of what disobedience why because they carry a contaminated atmosphere among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. Wow. The prince of power of air is a global atmosphere of evil. It's an evil corruption. It consistently influences and tries to contaminate the righteous. The word tells us that the only thing that's restraining evil from really going full-blown is the body of Christ. Once we're out of here, there will be no more restraints. And if you think it's bad now, wait till we're out of here. Matthew 5.
So you're assisting the kingdom of God in restraining the presence of evil, or you're assisting the kingdom of darkness in promoting the presence of evil? Matthew 5, 13. Is everybody there? Let's speak it, please. And you are the what? Salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how is it to be seasoned? It is then no good, <laughs> good for nothing, but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. Wow. We are the salt of the earth. The salt of the earth. Why? Because we carry a pure atmosphere but the presence of God. Verse 14. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. So what? Let your light or let your what? Atmosphere. So shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Do not think that I've come to destroy the law of the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to what? Fulfill. For surely I say to you, to heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Powerful. Therefore, whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so, shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does not teach, whoever, do, whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you, unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. What a warning. What a warning. If your righteousness does not exceed the scribes, the Pharisees, and Sadducees, the religious sect, why? How could your righteousness exceed it? By his presence in a pure atmosphere. That will produce righteousness, won't it? Amen? Oh, happy days. We are the salt and the light. We are the at in our atmosphere. You know, you got to look at, do people want to be in your atmosphere? Are people drawn to your atmosphere? Amen? Or do they run from it? Judge yourself in the present, not in the past. It's not what you did, it's what you are now, today. Are you drawing people into your atmosphere or are they running from your atmosphere? Romans 13. Romans 13, verse 11. Oh, happy days. Verse 11, and do this knowing the time that now is high time to what? Awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent the day is at hand, therefore let us cast off the works of darkness. That means cast off the what? Contaminated atmosphere. And let us put on the armor of light, which is a pure atmosphere. Let us walk properly, as in the day, not in revelry or drunkery, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy or bitterness, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust or exchange your atmosphere. Second Peter one. Second Peter chapter one. Is everybody okay? 
Is anybody okay? Okay. Hallelujah. Verse 2. Let's speak it. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the what? Knowledge. Knowledge. Now listen. Knowledge that is understood is called truth. Knowledge that is not understood is not truth. See, people have a lot of knowledge but don't understand it. People read the word of God and don't understand it. Then it can't be truth. Somebody get it? And you may know the truth, but until you put it into practice, nothing changes. People are going to get before the Lord and quote scripture. Well, Lord, such and such says, such and such says, such and such says. He's going to let them know, yeah, you know the scriptures, but don't know the word. Because he's the word. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ as his divine power. What's his divine power? His presence. Has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature. Now the divine nature is of a pure atmosphere. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge control over yourself, to self-control, perseverance, to ver perseverance godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For these things are yours, if they are, and if you do these and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Everyone say never stumble. Never. Why? Because you will maintain a pure atmosphere. For so an entrance will be supplied to you. Why will an entrance be supplied? Because he's got a pure atmosphere. They will join together. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Praise God. Divine power is his presence, carries a presence, a precious promises of knowledge. If used, will crucify the old man of corruption in exchange for a divine nature and a pure atmosphere. It says that you and I were cleansed from our past presence or past sin, which is the old presence, the old man character. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians 5. Your atmosphere. Second Corinthians five verse one. Is everybody there? For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. Now, what is that habitation? Is it a pure atmosphere? Yes. That's what Adam and Eve lost. The enemy took it from them in the garden. That's why the Lord had to clothe them by killing an animal and skinning it, shedding of blood. He put another presence on them. It was a temporary one. Until the Holy Spirit come. Verse 3, if indeed having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent grown, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but what? 
further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given us his spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Now faith is your connection, isn't it? Forever attached into the heavenlies, praise God. Forever, forever activated in the heavenlies. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be with the Lord. Um, to be what? To be well pleasing. So if you're well pleasing to him, are you going to carry a pure atmosphere? Yes. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what has been done, whether good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are well known to God, and I also trust are well known in your conscience. Habitation is our atmosphere around us and in us. We desire a pure atmosphere. It is a godly desire. If you don't desire a pure atmosphere, something's not right. Psalm 16. Psalm 16, verse 9. Therefore my heart is glad, and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope, for you will not leave my soul in Sheol, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You shall show me the path of life, and in your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are what? Pleasures forevermore. How, how, you know, again, it says the joy of the Lord is our strength, and in his presence is fullness of joy. And it says that at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. The problem is people are seeking his hand instead of his face. Hallelujah. His presence changes your atmosphere. Light drives out darkness. We need endurance to press through to shed our selfish presence for his presence and attain a pure atmosphere. Psalm 19. I really believe God is getting ready for the, one of the greatest moves and revivals and harvest. And it's going to be those that are in it or not in it. In Psalm 19, verse 7, it says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise is simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be, more to be desired are they than gold, yes, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them... Your servant is warned, and in keeping them, there is what? Great reward. Wow. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be what? Blameless, and I shall be innocent of great transgression. Now look at this. Let the words of my mouth. And the meditation of my heart or my mind and my thoughts be acceptable to your sight. Why? Because he sees it all. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Words of our mouth and thoughts of our heart be pure to maintain his presence in a pure atmosphere. Psalm 34. Remember, your own words is what contaminates your spirit. Psalm 
pure atmosphere. Psalm 34, verse 1. I will what? Bless the Lord when I feel like it. I will bless the Lord when I have to. I will bless the Lord when I want to. I will bless the Lord what? At all times. His praises shall continually be in my what? Man, if his praises are continuing in your mouth, you ain't got an opportunity to speak something stupid. Amen? That's what hallelujah is simple for. Hallelujah. I freak a lot of people out in the stores. I'll be standing in line writing a check out. A thought will come out. I'll say, oh, no. Hallelujah. People will fall out around me just from there. They go, ah. But you know what? I got rescued. Oh, let me help you out. Oh, excuse me. Let me introduce you to, to hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. They looked at him and were radiant. And their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his what? Troubles. Now, here's the right. Check this out. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers him. Listen, when you carry a pure atmosphere, an angel of the Lord stays with you. This angel can kill 185,000 people. So what's the problem? Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. Why? Because he provides everything. The young lions lack and suffer hunger. But those who seek the Lord shall not what? Lack any good thing. Remember, in his presence, everything is available. Everything. He knows what you need. Just because you didn't get it today doesn't mean it's not coming. As long as you don't contaminate your atmosphere, it won't be stolen. Amen? Oh, happy days. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Everybody there? Verse 1. Finally. Finally then, brethren, we urge you and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more, just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your what? Sanctification. So, without sanctification, can you man have carry a pure atmosphere? No. That you should abstain from sexual immorality. That each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor and fear of the Lord. Not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. That no one should take advantage of one and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarn you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but to what? Holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. Praise God. Now concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. And indeed, 
you do so toward all brethren who are in all Macedonia. But we urge you, brethren, that you increase more and more, and that you also aspire to lead a quiet life, mind your own stinking business, and work out your own salvation and your, with your own hands as, you, as we commanded you, that you may what? Walk properly toward those who are outside that you may lack nothing. And we'll close at 1 John chapter 5. Oh, happy days. 1 John chapter 5. In verse 18. Pure atmosphere. Let's start at 17. Make it simple. All righteousness is what? Is what? Sin. All unrighteousness is sin. <laughs> Hallelujah. And there is sin not leading to death, but we know that all sin leads to death eventually if you keep doing it. Amen. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin. In other words, he doesn't allow that presence of evil to maintain around them. But he who has been born of God keeps himself, right? And the wicked one does not touch him. Why? Because the wicked one cannot touch a pure atmosphere. Can't touch it. Do, 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 do. Amen? Can't touch this, right? Verse 19. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God in eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from what? Idols. Why? Because they contaminate. And again, we can be the worst idol. A pure atmosphere. Remember, the presence of evil can't touch that. So you got to ask yourself sometimes, well, how's the enemy attack me? Well, he throws fiery darts. Remember, he throws those paper airplanes. Amen? They have notes on them. Don't read them. They're like fortune cookies. Don't read them. Because as soon as it starts messing with your mind, you got to reject it. But if you're really walking in the spirit and in that place of a pure atmosphere, they won't be near you. You can sense them way out. Their voices are very dim. You can just shrug them off, ignore them, keep going. And you can cast them out even from a distance. Just call some fire bombs down on them. <laughs> Amen. You have the authority to. Elijah called fire down, right? We do too. I call it down every single day. Remember, we're demon hunters. It's a sport. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your glory, and we're honored and praised for who you are, what you've done, and what you're doing. Lord, I'm asking that you continue to revive us, quicken us, purify us, that we may maintain a pure atmosphere with your presence so that the world may see you and not us. In Jesus' name. Nobody said amen? amen? Hallelujah. Give somebody a hug, and may the Lord keep you in his presence.